everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do a video about my Halloween slash spooky fall book recommendations. I just thought that you guys might be interested in knowing some of the books that I think are a good time to read during this time of year. So anything that's kind of like a little bit creepy, maybe a little eerie, maybe a little scary, although I'm pretty much a huge scaredy cat, so you're not gonna get anything super scary in this list, but you know how it is. Without further ado, let's get into it. So for some of these books, I do have physical copies to show you. For others, I don't because I listen to them on audiobook, but that's okay. I'm just gonna kind of go through my list and yada yada yada. I mean, you get it, right? So the first book I'm going to recommend to you for this spooky Halloween season is The Child Thief, and this book is by Brom. This is a fairy tale retelling of Peter Pan in the creepiest sort of way, the way that Peter Pan himself is actually a child thief. He goes into the mortal world and he takes children and he takes them back to Neverland where they have to like, become killers and like all this stuff. Anyways, so he's bringing all these kids back to Neverland and it's just like there's creepy monsters, there's creepy characters. Peter Pan himself is a really creepy looking dude. Just nothing about this world is right. It's not kind of the fun and magical version, like the Disney version. This book also has lots of drawings in it. Let me see if I can, I just saw one. Where do you go? For example, here is a picture of Something. I don't know what the heck she is, but anyways, that's just one of the examples. So there's some really creepy sketches and stuff throughout this whole book. It is a very big book, but it really didn't take that long to read. How many pages? I mean, it's really a lot shorter than it looks. It's like less than 500 pages, but still, this is a really good creepy book to read. Something that's going to kind of give you the, the willies. I remember it giving me a few little like weird dreams after I read it. Next up, I'm going to recommend a duology, and that is the Anna Dressed in Blood duology by Kendar Blake. So there's Anna Dressed in Blood, and then there's Girl of Nightmares. So this duology, there's hair in my face. <laughs> this duology is about a boy named Cass, and he's kind of like a ghost hunter type of thing. Pretty cool because it's actually set in Canada, which is awesome, because rarely does that ever happen. Um, anyway, so he goes into this haunted house, and the haunted house is being inhabited by a ghost who is Anna, dressed in blood. So Anna doesn't want anybody in her house. She like kills people when they come in and all that stuff. So basically the duology is about, um, I'm not gonna say what the second one's about, but it is about Cass and he's trying to figure out what Anna's deal is or something about her that kind of like draws him in. It's pretty spooky and creepy, but it's not too much. So. I really, really like this duology. I know some people think that, you know, it's just okay, but I actually really enjoyed it. I found it to be just the right amount of creepy, and yeah, I definitely recommend it. So the next one I'm going to recommend was an audiobook that I listened to. That was The Shock of the Fall by Nathan Filer. So this book is about a young boy, and I mean like young boy, and his name is Matthew, and his brother Simon dies. And we don't know exactly how Simon died. All we know is that Matthew blames himself. So this is a really kind of, it's just a very dark setting and it's about children and kind of, the, it's a very unreliable narrator so you really don't know what's actually happened because you're looking at it from Matthew's perspective but he's very confused about what actually happened to his brother. It is a very well written book. It is really, really enjoyable. I did enjoy the audiobook. I do think you'd probably get more out of it reading the actual book though. I don't know, I just find some books to be like that. Highly, highly, highly recommend. It's eerie, it's kind of like heart wrenching, and it's just, I don't know, it's just a little creepy in the same, you know, it's just dark. It's a dark read. Dark. Next up, I have a YA psychological thriller, and that is Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Ermintrout. I read this one, I think, a couple of years ago, and it's about a girl who her and her friends get kidnapped, and she can't remember what happens. So the entire story, she's trying to figure out what happened to her and her friend. She is kind of piecing things back together. This is one of those stories where you can't trust 
any of the characters because any single one of them could have been the attacker. So you really just don't know what's going on. I did not find this predictable. I remember guessing every single character was the one who did it. So I highly recommend this, especially if you're more into YA than adult and you want to look for a psychological thriller. I think this is a great option. Don't look back. I also have a video review on this, so if I can find a review on this or any of the books that I mention, I will link them down below. Next up is one that I feel like is on a lot of people's list, but that is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This is just such an awesome story. Like, once again, it very much reminds me of uh, Shock of the Fall, only it's a bit... I don't want to say younger, but this is kind of like a middle grade YA, whereas Shock of the Fall is an adult book. So uh, I think it is anyways. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So this is just kind of like a really dark book. It includes lots of very creepy pictures. Oh, hello. I feel like this happened the last time I showed this book. I couldn't really find any pictures. You know, just kind of creepy pictures and stuff like that. So this is about a monster who shows up outside of this little boy's window every night and he's kind of like... It, it's one of those stories that really just kind of messes with your mind. You don't really know what's going on. Connor is kind of like unsure of what's happening in his life and things like that. It's kind of his mother starts these treatments and so it's just... I feel like it's just a way that he's dealing with it. He sees this monster and the monster kind of makes him think about things in different ways. Anyways, I'm sure I'm not explaining this very well, but it is an extremely good book. It is a very quick read. It's very short, not a lot of words on the pages, but it is a very effective read. So this one, if not any of the others, you need a quick Halloween read, I recommend this. Hi, honey. Next up, I'm going to recommend the Mara Dyer trilogy. So that is the Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, the Evolution of Mara Dyer, and the Retribution of Mara Dyer. This is just another one of those books with a very like unreliable narrator. You don't really know what's real and what's not. So this one I found to be just a random amount of creepy as well. It's very riveting, it's very captivating, and I enjoyed all three books in this series. A lot of people talk about this series. It really is good. I listened to the audiobooks and I loved the audiobooks. So basically it's about Mara and she like things, weird things just always kind of happen in her life, but there is an explanation for it which gets discovered in the book. I'm really trying to avoid giving you too many details about these books because one thing about thrillers and horrors and creepy books, I really feel like you shouldn't know much about it before going into it because where's the fun? Where's the element of surprise? Anyways, that's kind of what it's about. Very, very good. Highly recommend. Next up is one that is just about Zombies! It's Warm Bodies. This is an oldie but a goodie for me. I read this one years ago and it is kind of creepy. It does have creepy, kind of scary, like zombie elements, but it's also a love story which makes it kind of funny. So if you're just kind of looking for something that's in the setting of Halloween type and spooky type, this is a great choice if you just want to avoid the scare altogether. So it's about a zombie who falls in love with a human girl and he learns how to love again. It's so good. I really love this book. Next one I want to recommend is actually a graphic novel and that is Anya's Ghost by Vera Bosgrohl. Or Anyways, it doesn't matter. Can't remember how to say it. So this is a graphic novel about a ghost. So, like it's about a little girl who all of a sudden meets this ghost and the ghost follows her everywhere. She can't really get rid of her and the ghost starts to do like crazy things to her and it's really good. Like it's just one of those graphic novels that I feel like a lot of people talked about um, a few years ago and I haven't heard much about it since then. I found it at the library. I read it and I really, really liked it. So if you're looking once again for something quick, kind of creepy, but like it's still a graphic novel and it's very cartoony, so it's not too creepy. I definitely recommend it. It's really, really good. I have one more book to show you and then just two kind of random suggestions. One of my all-time favorite psychological thriller books is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. I've talked about this book I feel like a million, a million times. In my opinion, it is far better than Gone Girl or anything like that. It's about this woman who wakes up every morning and she has, it's like 51st date, she has to relearn everything every single day. So she has amnesia, but it only, it's like a 24 hour amnesia. 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 So every single day she wakes up next to this man. She doesn't know who he is. He says that he's her husband. She has to kind of listen to everything he says and believe everything she says, he says. 
but she starts to take this journal so every single day she starts to write down she has this camera where she like talks to everything like that so she can try and figure out what the heck happened to her because nothing is making sense she meets with a psychologist secretly all this stuff so really it's just about her trying to figure out what the heck happened to her what kind of injury or accident she had in order to um, become this way because every day she wakes up and in her mind she's like 20 something and she looks in the mirror and she's in her 40s so this book is so good. It, I really like it's super captivating and I don't know I just if you like Gone Girl or anything like that I think you will really like this. Okay so on to my honorable mention type of things and I'm saying that because one of them I haven't finished reading because I'm too big of a baby but I really enjoyed the parts that I read. That is The Shining by Stephen King. This book literally scared the crap out of me. I think I got about halfway through and I had to stop reading it because I was so scared but I was really enjoying it but because I'm such a baby, can't do it. If you guys have any recommendations for horror books that are scary but like won't make me not be able to sleep for like weeks and weeks or look in a mirror because I was always afraid something was going to pop up in the mirror after reading this. Anyways, but let me know any suggestions you may have. That one, if you are into scary books, it's a classic. You've got to read it. So the last one I'm going to talk about is Anything by Neil Gaiman and through the audiobook. Neil Gaiman reads his own audiobooks. It makes them like this crazy experience. It's just so, so good. I recommend Ocean at the End of the Lane, Coraline, Graveyard Book, anything like that. It, they all just have this creepy, eerie, weird, Tim Burton-esque type of feel to them. And they are very Halloween-y and they are very good. So highly recommend if you're looking for good audiobooks. I'm also currently reading Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Loving it. Creepy. Really, really good. So I'm not done yet, so I can't technically recommend it, but I know it's minor details. Those are just some of the books that I would recommend for you to read during the Halloween spooky season. Uh, let me know down below if you have any other recommendations. I would love to know. I'm really looking for some more good psychological thrillers to read because I absolutely love them so much. Anyways, you guys, that's all I have for you today. So thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Boo. Hey, Abby. Now, but you're kind of spooky, huh? Cause yeah, because you're a black cat. Say hi to the people. Hi to the people. Boo. Boo. Loves me.